Hello everyone. We have a 52 year old lady. She is very obese. She has intermittent right upper quadrant pain and nausea. She had an elective cholecystectomy for gallstone a year ago. The pain is located in the right subcostal area and generally lasts 30 to 60 minutes. Patient recalls that she had similar pain episode before the surgery also. That means the character or nature of pain is almost same before and after surgery and recurred, and she had elective cholecystectomy. Lab result are as follows. Bilirubin is mildly increased. Alkaline phosphatase is increased. And as far as SGOT, SGPT, they are also increased. One thing is there, this SGOT and see the values they are, they will be needing in the coming discussion. Ultrasound abdomen reveals mild dilatation of the common bile duct. When cast normal, next best in the management of this patient is answer is ERCP. Well, if you look into patient presentation, is concerning for post-cholecystectomy syndrome. Patient gallbladder has already been removed, but still she continues to have pain like that before. This is what we call as post-PCS shot. This is referred to persistent abdominal pain or dyspepsia, nausea, that occurs either post-operatively early or may month to year late. That means it may occur soon after surgery or may occur after many years of cholecystectomy also. This may be a late presentation also. This can be due to biliary reason, retained stone in the common bile duct or cystic duct, biliary dyskinesia, extra biliary pancreatitis, peptic ulcer or coronary artery disease. There can be so many reasons for that. Patients usually notice same pain that I had prior to surgery, new pain just after surgery or it may occur after many years also. The same pain that never went away. In fact, the patient may come to doctor and say, doctor, I continue to have same pain, although we have done the surgery, but pain remains the same. Lab finding alkaline phosphate increase, like in this case also, the normal level is this, and the patient has alkaline phosphate or more than what is the normal range. Mild abnormal serum amino transfer, look into this. This SGOT, SGPT are mildly raised. Common by dilated common bile duct on abdominal ultrasound, it is seen. The uh, ultrasound of the duodenum abdomen reveal mild dilatation of common bile duct in the patient also. These findings usually suggest common bile duct stone, biliary sphincter of ODI dysfunction. And the next step involvement is after end ultrasound is ERCP. MRCP, Magnetic Resonance Cholangiopentacography, for final diagnosis and guiding therapy, we use MRCP. Treatment is directed toward the causative factor. Let's look into other options. Option A, anti-mitochondrial antibody is, this is usually elevated in primary biliary cirrhosis. Now, I have a question for you. Write down the answer. We know very well it's an autoimmune disease. What are usually first symptom of primary biliary cirrhosis? Of course, many pe people are asymptomatic, but if they have a symptom, what is the first symptom? Write down the answer. Answer is pruritus. Very, very interesting is a liver disease, but coming as itching or pruritus. Patient may be asymptomatic or typically have other symptom. Pruritus fatigue along with little bit of abdominal pain may be there, but this is the first symptom. Primary blood sources can present with lab findings similar to those seen in this patient, but they do not have dilated common bile duct. Okay, this is a very, very important point that bile duct is not dilated because this is the intrahepatic pathology. Because this is the intrahepatic biliary problem. So, bile duct is not dilated in primary biliary cirrhosis. 
Now I have a question for you. Write down the answer. Which anti-tubercle drug is used to treat itching in the case of primary biliary cirrhosis? Write down the answer. Answer is rifampicin. Option C, helicobacter pylori, stool anti-antestic, is used for diagnosis of H. pylori infection with peptic ulcer disease. Not typically associated with abnormal liver function tests or dilated common bile duct. So this test has no relevance to present question. Liver biopsy, when we do initial evaluation, cannot provide a definite diagnosis or determine severity of liver disease. The patient may require liver biopsy if ERCP or other laboratory tests for hepatitis are, are unremarkable. But in our case, the case is a clear-cut case. So there is no indication of liver biopsy. Arsodeoxycholic therapy, this can treat cholesterol gallstone in patients with mild symptoms and not and those who are not a candidate for cholecystectomy. It is also used to treat primary bilirubin and primary sclerosing cholangitis, but it has got no role in present scenario. Golden line to remember, post cholecystectomy syndrome is persistent abdominal pain or dyspepsia, either post-operatively, early or month to year late after cholecystectomy. Etiology include biliary or extra biliary, and biliary retain common bile duct, or cystic duct stone, extra biliary pancreatic peptic ulcer are the causes which can lead to, which can lead to uh, primary because this post PCS. Abdominal imaging ultrasound followed by direct visualization ERCP, MRCP can establish diagnosis and guide therapy toward the causative factor. Well, I hope you like the session. Just to inform you, we have following courses for you. Smart Medicine, there are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject, covering A to Z, including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than 1,000 questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB Medicine and Family Medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile ad as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much.